So diazomethane is the structure over here. Now diazomethane is something that on its own, it's not important. So diazomethane is something that we will, you will very rarely hear about, you will very rarely use. But diazomethane can produce a carbene. Now, carbenes are hugely important because carbenes are very reactive. They are carbons with two bonds and a lone pair. So it's not even going to have an octet of electrons, which means that it's going to be hugely, hugely reactive. Okay. Now, what you end up getting here is a situation where you should be thinking about how to prepare this carbene. And this carbene, you either have light, you use copper, or you heat. So there are a number of ways how you can actually get your compound, your carbene, which can then be used to react. Okay? So you can actually do this, you can actually use this in the lab to react with alkenes. And what you'll end up getting is this a reaction like this. Okay? Now, this addition happens to be syn addition. It has to be syn because it's only one atom. Okay, it's the carbon that's reacting. So this will be syn addition. And the syn addition means that it's going to be pushing the two items or all the groups to one side. Okay, if they are going to be cis, they're going to be on the same side. If they're going to be trans, they will be on opposite directions. Okay, in the final product. And we can see that by seeing the reaction when you have a trans compound. For this one, you do not need to have the mechanism. Okay, for this one, you do not need to have the mechanism. So don't worry too much about how it would react. Okay, that's why I started with this one. Okay, but you can form cyclopropanes and cyclopropanes are actually quite useful compounds because cyclopropanes, you can actually end up in a situation where you can easily, okay, or I would say you can easily um, note that they are either bound in natural compounds or else you can then react them further. Cyclopropanes are highly reactive. So that is something that you should keep in mind. That is something that you should be thinking about. That is something that if you are a little bit unsure, don't worry, okay? And we will get back to this later on, okay? But for now, cyclopropanes, I think you would have covered in other topics. But strain on three-membered rings is something that is important because that strain you will find it with four-membered rings and to a certain extent in five-membered rings. And the five-membered rings we're going to be speaking about would be furan later on, okay, where you have this little bit of strain, where you have this little bit of reactivity, okay? But diazomethane, you don't need to know how to make it. You just need to know that it is a salt of... Uh, it is a salt where you have a lone pair carbon and the diazo group, okay? And it is highly, highly reactive. Mechanism-wise, again, so, no need. Someone has so, a question? Yes? So uh, the reaction make, it maintains the specific historic geometry of the, of the, like, the trans still remains trans and the cis still remains cis. Okay. It, it will keep the stereochemistry. Okay. okay, so trans will always be R and S. Cis will always be either RR and SS. Cis will give a rhythmic mixture. Okay, because you can't control from which side you're going to add. It's, it's going to be syn addition, but you can attack either from this side or else you can attack from the bottom. Okay, so you can't really control which one you're going to have. You just can control that you will have Syn addition. Charadik. Good. Now, so that is a little bit of talk about the diazomethanes. Okay. Now, 
diazomethane if you want to actually prepare it, which is not going to be part of this module. Okay, but if you want to prepare it, it's prepared from these compounds. Okay, and you normally prepare this in C2. Okay, but you can see even these compounds are not that stable. So if you want to prepare a cyclopropane, this might be a good way to go about it, but you have to be very careful with temperatures, with conditions, and this will immediately decompose under basic conditions. So normally it starts under an acidic condition. Why? Because under basis it will decompose, meaning that it should be stable. It should be stable under acidic conditions. Not always the case. Okay? Not always the case, but it should be. Now, once we've spoken about diazomethane, we're going to speak about the COPE rearrangement. Okay? And the COPE rearrangement, it's a very simple reaction where you're going to start from a nitroso amine and finish and finish in an alkene. So this is the second reaction where we are end up ending up in an alkene. With that, with, we've done one reaction yesterday. The uh, Hoffman elimination. Okay, and this is the second one, the cope elimination, where you are going to end up with where you are going to end up with an alkene. Okay, now, I did speak that you need a nitroso amine. And in fact, the nitroso amine is again normally done and produced in C2, where we use a strong oxidant like MCPBA. I'm not sure if, you've, if you have used MCPBA before. Okay. Um, It's metachloroperoxybenzoic acid, so it is a peroxide. That's why it's so reactive. Okay, that's why it's a good oxidizing agent. And you would be able to have your, your you need to change your amine into an alkene. Now, what you do need to have here is this hydrogen over there. It's an alpha hydrogen. Without the alpha hydrogen, this reaction will not take place. Without the alpha hydrogen, this reaction will not take place. Okay? And this is the mechanism. So as mechanisms go, this is just one step mechanism. Okay? This is just gonna be a one step mechanism. Now, I know that some of you are copying this. I'm going to draw this mechanism myself, okay? I'm going to draw that mechanism to make it a little bit clearer. And even for you, you can note that that mechanism is going to be the most important aspect that we're going to have here. Okay, so mechanisms are always going to be very important. So let's let's take a look. Instead of having R1 and R2, okay, I think it's easier if I use letters and if I do them in color. Okay, and it doesn't matter what you've got on your nitrogen. So this, I'm still gonna leave as R, R, O, and minus and the plus. So 
the oxygen negative charge, okay, the oxygen negative charge is going to be a good base. An alkoxide, now this is not truly an alkoxide, okay, but an alkoxide is a very, very strong base. Why? Because it has a negative charge on the oxygen. Here you have something very similar to the alkoxide, even though it is completely not an alkoxide, okay, and that can attack the hydrogen. Once it attacks the hydrogen, then these electrons are extra, okay? So they will end up going and form a double bond. But now it is this carbon that has too many electrons because it would have five bonds, which is not entirely possible. Therefore, the bond between the carbon and nitrogen will break and go onto the nitrogen. And this will create a nitrogen with, a, with, uh, with, a, with no charge at all. So this is a three, three bond breaks, bond, uh, bond breaks, concerted bond breaks, where they are all happening, happening at the same time. And this is a six electron mechanism. Six electron mechanism meaning you are breaking three bonds. Okay? Six electron mechanism meaning you are breaking three bonds. Okay? So that is something that you should be noting that it's something that you should be paying attention to. Um, so whenever you're doing something like this, always note, okay, always note what mechanisms are being made and what mechanisms are being broken, okay? Uh, what bonds are being made and what bonds are being broken. It's a very simple mechanism. As mechanisms go, I do believe it's a very simple mechanism. Okay, as mechanisms go. Plus, but please note, you need to know why it's happening. At can least, they, it, yes. Can they are groups on the nitrogen be hydrogen instead of carbons? I believe so. Um, I've always had them as a methyl group at least. But I believe so, okay? It's, uh, what does it mean, I believe so? It means it's possible, okay? But I have not seen it myself. Um, from my opinion and more from, from my experience, this is something where it's possible, okay? But it wouldn't be, when you're writing it normally, these kind of groups would be amides. Uh, would be amines, uh, secondary or tertiary amines. Because normally, that's what would be most common. Okay? You don't, you rarely ever see, or in my opinion, I rarely ever work with primary amines. Normally, you try to make secondary amines. But I believe so. Okay? Um, let me see if I find some of the examples with hydrogens. Methyl, methyl, methyl. Ring. So I can't find any, but I would need to check. Okay. I'll confirm it and some other lesson if I can find it on this website. Okay, thank you. But up till now, all the examples I'm finding, they use methyl as an example. Okay? They use the methyl group for the R groups. I, I, I'll confirm it, okay? Because they would all be taken from the same. Unfortunately, most of these websites are all, they all use the same item for reference. So now I, I'm using chemlibra.com, that is, chemlibratext.org and Master Organic Chemistry. Both are very, very good on these instances. But unfortunately, both of them 
happen to be in a situation where once you actually take note of what they're doing, once you see what they're what they're doing, they they copy from the same item. Okay, they copy from each other. It's not as if it's not something because they want to copy, but I think they are run by similar people. Right? If, if I want to be honest, I think they are run by the same person, but I don't know. Okay, so that is the co rearrangement. The last mechanism I want to speak about today is the Beckman rearrangement. Okay, it's the Beckman rearrangement. And this is going to be this reaction over here. Now, to get your interest a little bit, because I know that speaking like this I can be a bit boring sometimes. So I try not to be, I try to joke around, but it's very difficult to pause jokes when you can't see the students face to face. So I wouldn't be surprised if I were to use multiple mechanisms in the exam for one of the longer questions, which would mean that I give you a structure, go from A to B. I give you the intermediate. I might or might not do that to be honest, depending on my mood when I'm writing the paper. So hope that I am in a good mood when I'm writing the paper. <laughs> um, but it all depends that I would want you to be able to say, okay, I can get from A to B going to this intermediate. I can also ask you, I can also, also ask you to draw the mechanisms. Now, the mechanisms I will try and avoid this year. I will give you one or two, but considering it will be an online exam, giving you a mechanism, if anyone, okay, if anyone does not use the internet to draw a mechanism, I would call you crazy. Because you can find them, and at the end of the day, I do believe that the exam should be prepared considering that you can use the internet, okay? Which messed me up last year and then generally because normally you find some questions online, but if I can find the question, then you can find the question and you can copy it. Okay, so it's a little bit of a tough task to do your exam paper this year. So back my rearrangement, you are changing the structure you are preparing an amide from a hydroxylamine, and you are therefore changing the carbon-carbon structure, the carbon-carbon bonds. From here, then you can reduce to the amine, and you can do, you can prepare alkenes, you can do a number of mechanisms that we've already done yesterday or today to change from a carb. So you, you are eventually breaking the carbon-carbon bond, okay? Now, back my rearrangement, there was a practical about these about this. So I was entirely sure if you've managed to do it yet or not. Okay. If you have not managed to do it, you know, I'm going to be in communication with Professor Sinagra and Claude. Um, I am trying before, before sending them emails, I'm trying to figure out when I am available. So if the need arises, then I will come to university myself and supervise you. So that or as to try and ensure that all the students are getting the best possible service and all the students are in a position where they can finish the practicals or at least do some practicals. Now, having said that, my availabilities are all over the place right now. So I will advise you what we're gonna be doing on Monday, okay? Now, so the first step which I did not put here, is hydrogenation, okay? Or addition of a proton to the hydroxyl amine. Now, an amine is an N double bond C, okay? So hydroxyl amine would be carbon single bond nitrogen, okay? And an OH group to the nitrogen. So hydroxyl amine, would be carbon um, 
carbon double bond nitrogen single bond oxygen okay so by adding the the proton to the oxygen you are producing a very good and strong leaving group this strong leaving group can then end up giving a nitrogen okay so let's actually see it um, professor is it a minus sign on the end or is it like it's a lone pair okay. if anyone calls the professor again i will answer your questions <laughs> okay okay um, I, listen, I, know, no, I know that the other everyone feels comfortable calling him with you fine but you make me feel not about making me feel old i think if i act or if I try to dis distance myself from you guys, it's gonna make it more difficult to ask questions via email. And I would like you to ask questions, especially now that we are online, because in the past, maybe you could have seen me at university and told me, listen, can I have five minutes? But now you can't do that, okay? So I want to see approachable, not just the old guy behind the computer giving us a boring lecture about mechanisms. You, or, or I know that everyone loves mechanisms, okay? These are the hope for an informative student with rootless chemistry that they can be doing mechanisms when they are 20, 21 years old. Now, so the first step, so let's actually, no, I'm not gonna draw the whole mechanism, okay? By hand, because if I can't, if I can't draw benzene, I wonder how I'm going to draw cycloheptane. But what you'll get here, in fact, I'm going to avoid the long pairs for now. Okay. Now, you cannot really break the, or lose the water through the nitrogen. Okay. Because Normally, that happens by pushing electrons. And the electrons that we can push are going to be either these or that. And in fact, if it's symmetrical, then this is not a problem at all. So we just pick one. Okay. And you can lose the water. And this is the rearrangement. So the, rearrange the rearrangement, the first step actually is the first step actually would be, okay, the actual rearrangement here. So that is something that consider, keep in mind, and note that the first step of the structure is the rearrangement, okay, which then produces a positive charge. Now, the positive charge can either be on the carbon or it can be on the nitrogen. By electronegativity, this one should be the most stable conformation. Okay, that one should be the most stable conformation, but that one cannot react much further. Okay, that one cannot react much further. But if you have the resonance form, and remember resonance form, even if it's not the most stable, it's still going to be present, even if it's not the most stable, it's still going to be present, okay? So that is something to keep in mind. Then the resonance form can be attacked by water, okay? And because this is, again, the second step where you have an arrow, let's show how this, happens. Now, okay, and the positive charge is on the nitrogen. Now, water can come from a far away place and attack the carbon stabilizing the nitrogen. So this would actually put a positive charge on the oxygen, but it's not a problem because one can easily lose a proton. So 
This happens all the time with high alcohols, where you protonate the alcohol, okay? Where you protonate the alcohol, and after protonating the alcohol, then you end up in a situation where you are going to have, or to have to lose the proton. That happens all the time. And it's not a problem at all, okay? In fact, it's something that it is so common when it comes to alcohols that if you leave an alcohol for a long period of time, there's a good chance that it will have equilibrated with the alkene over and over and over again, okay? But it's important to note, it's important to realize that yes, you do have protonation, the protonation, protonation, the protonation. So this step, it's not something that I'm going to be giving you the mechanism for, okay? I mean, is this a, it's simply this arrow, but it doesn't really matter. Once you prepare, once you prepare the alcohol group on the alkene bond, Okay. One second. Because they skipped a step. So this product here can easily obtain a hydrogen, a proton. If there are protons in solutions, and there will be a proton because you're gonna have the water, okay? The COH2 plus group losing a proton, okay? This will then form an H plus. So here, you can even draw the mechanism if you want. Now, this can either happen Intra molecularly, or, or else it can happen intermolecularly. Okay, so it can either obtain the proton from the same molecule, or it can obtain the proton from a different molecule, but it could happen like this. Okay, very, very possible. It's not the end of the world if it does, in fact. So, again, always just make sure that you are in a position where you know that this can happen, okay? You are in a position where you know that this can happen, okay? So once you are here, you're gonna have the positive charge on the nitrogen. And to remove that positive charge on the nitrogen, you can lose, you can use the electrons from the oxygen and break the double bond at taking the nitrogen to get your final product. Okay, to get your final product. Now, um, they're drawing it as a resonance form to give the proton out the oxygen with a positive charge, and then you will lose it from there, okay? I would even go with say, why they are in these forms, they are important parts, important steps in the reaction. So I'm not entirely sure if you've realized, but we are using, using resonance forms, not just as resonance forms, not just as something that is present, but we are using resonance forms as a very important part, okay, as a protocol, in the mechanism as a process as a part of the mechanism so if you don't do this if you don't show me how you've got or how you've gotten one two three four five six yes if you don't show me how you've gotten this product here i will be asking you and telling you okay fine 
but how did you go from this one to that one? Okay, and it would be very difficult for you to actually tell me. I have done it through, and I would be very curious to see how you would have done it. Okay, I would be very curious to see how you would have done it. So that is something I would want you to keep in mind when working on these in the future. Okay, now any questions about this mechanism? Um, the, the part where the water is attacking the sp uh, hybridized carbon, that there's kind of like a delta positive charge on it or something. Like, why is it attacking this? You're, you're, you're referring about here, right? Yeah, there. It is a very unstable bond. You're referring to it as an sp hybridized carbon, right? Well, yeah, because it's like three. No, it should, it should be. But what what should the angle be for an sp hybridized carbon? What's the question? What should the angle be for an sp hybridized carbon? You're muted. Should be straight, like one hundred eight. You know. Is that one hundred eighty degrees? No. <laughs> okay. Now, um, it's actually a very good question that you just asked okay because it's a situation where why do some things happen and why do some other things don't in this case they are happening it's happening because there's strain it wants to go at least sp2 okay it would want to be at least sp2 so that sp hybridized is not going to be very stable Yes, Melania? Uh, the first step. Why is it that um, it's the bond from the like from the cyclohexane part, which is attacking? I don't want to call electron style bond to let you attack in nitrogen, which is what you tell me. I don't want a double bond. You don't want a lone pair of nitrogen. Let's start from the double bond. Okay. So that nitrogen is neutral, right? Mm -hmm. So if we were to start from the double bond, the, the nitrogen would end up being unstable. Okay. Okay. Have you ever seen a nitrogen like this? No. But that would be your product there. Okay, that's what you would be making. And that doesn't have the octet rule, that doesn't, doesn't obey the octet rule. Now, even without the octet rule, normally we don't have the same item changing the electron from one point to the other. Very rarely we'll see that. We might see it if we have charges, but there is no charge over here. Okay, so that doesn't happen. So you have to either go through this bond or this bond. And in the situation, it is the same. And normally, unless you have a very mean examiner who truly doesn't like you, okay, they will be the same. If you ever find something that is not the same, Okay, now kidding aside about the examiner. Continue the mechanism with one. Let's say you're doing some research and it was symmetrical. For some reason, you chose, you chose a compound, it wasn't symmetrical. You're gonna have one product over the other. They will never be 50-50. You might have to analyze to see which product you're getting. But when you look at the energy diagrams, the two mechanisms would never be complete 50-50, okay? So you would have to say, okay, this is more stable than the other, or this is predominantly being formed and do the mechanism for that product. Even though you know the two would happen, but for now assume 
that I'm always going to be giving you something that is completely symmetrical. Okay, thank you. Okay, welcome. Any other questions? Uh, regarding what Rachel said, I think the uh, the water attacks that carbon because in the other resonance form it has a positive charge. So no, so it's still a little bit. This resonance form and this resonance form, they are completely different. Okay, if it wanted to attack this resonance form that is marked right now, it would have been able to attack it without any problems. Okay. 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 Now, another reason apart from the SP hybridization being unstable here, but that's pro predominantly the, the main one in my opinion. You also have, by adding water, you are transferring the charge from the nitrogen to the oxygen, which you can then lose through, a, through the protonation. So you can see that the charge is gonna be eventually transferred The charge was transferred from the proton, uh, from the nitrogen to the oxygen. And that charge transfer is important because then you can lose a proton. Now remember, as I said yesterday, yes, this mechanism, this reaction will be highly balanced towards the right over the product. Okay, especially if you use certain conditions, okay, and the conditions would, you would have to identify for each reaction. But in this case, for example, here, for you can add a base, which they're adding. Okay, why, why add a base? Because you remove that step that's not reversible anymore. Plus, even apart from there, once you form this bond, once you produce this compound, it's highly going to be very highly difficult to go back. Okay, but let's forget the reversibility of reaction. Here, once you once you make this product and you lose a proton, then you're producing a stable compound. Then you're producing something that has no charges. Yes, you will protonate it to finish off the rearrangement, but the reversibility is going to be much more difficult because this is unstable. If you were to look at an energy, energy diagram, and I'm inventing this one, I truly have no idea how in reality it would be. But I just assume it's something like this, where you have a lot of energy required to go back, okay? To reactivate the backward step. Okay, Nicole. Um, can I just uh, build on that a bit? So if in the exam, uh, I always have to go with the second one where there's a triple bond, attacking the positive charge would be like a different step and it's being correct in the exam yes okay <laughs> <laughs> thank you <laughs> let me make a note and this triple bond thing it's like we had done a mechanism this year where you add an alkene alkyne sorry and it attacks i think it was michael something alder reaction whatever it attacks the end and it's like building mechanism so it's kind of similar here I don't which one which mechanism did you, did you do it with me or with somebody no, else no with someone else in organic too. Okay. Did you do the, do you mean the Dilzelder mechanism? The Dilzelder reaction? No, not the Dilzelder. The Mikhail something. Let me try and find it. Do you remember the unit code? If I remember right, it's where you end up having a structure and you're building that huge cyclic thing. And it, I think it's an alpha beta um, with two ketones, something like this. It's like an aldo condensation thing. And then it attacks an alkyne, something through the formation of the enol. Listen, um, can like you this. give me the unit code or the name of the reaction? I'll try to find it, but... If you go on VLE, you would be able to find the code. That's me, because like, I don't want to waste time of the lesson. I'll look for it, and if anything, I'll send it. But okay. just Thank to you. confirm, it's all organic two is two five. What, what, what was the number? Organic two is uh, CHE three two four five. Okay. So you were speaking about, no, wait. 
No, that's, a, that's separation techniques, three, two, four, five. I'm not in a hurry. Let's stop. Let's do this.